Hello, my name's Lucy. I had so much fun last time I thought I'd give it another go. Um, so today I am cooking blueberry and vanilla muffins. Um, and it's, to spoil things from advance, it's for a packet mix. And I'm just going to say again, um, the way I'm doing this is uh, no cuts. Um, and that's partly so that um, you can see exactly how long everything takes um, like a normal person doing it. But um, also, I'm doing this for fun, and I enjoyed uh, talking to everyone as I, as I was cooking the last meal. That was nice. It felt like I had company. Uh, so that was really good. But if I had to edit afterwards, that would be uh, time-consuming and stressful, and it would stop being fun, and then I'd stop recording. So I think like m the minimal editing of putting a front card on, putting an end card on, and if I've recorded in bits, um, sticking the bits together... Uh, and that's going to be it. So, um, but like I said, I had fun, so that's fine. So as I said, today I'm going to be cooking uh, blueberry and vanilla muffins. Um, it's from a packet mix, which I normally, um, I don't tend to do packet mixes. I do tend to uh, cook myself, but I don't ever get round to baking very often. So um, if this, uh, and so this is one of the things you could at one point order with the fresh boxes and I've had it in the cupboard and I thought, well, A, I'm going to do this so I can have some nice muffins. Um, and B, you know, a packing mix is a good thing to do if it actually gets you doing the thing. Um, so I, I don't see the problem with that. And if I can get back into the habit, maybe I'll start cooking some more bigger things from scratch. Um, the the uh, selling point for these, the unique ones, is it's with wholemeal flour, which is supposed to be healthier, but it's still a muffin. So um, I have had a different type of these muffins. I think I had the uh, cranberry and white chocolate ones, and they weren't. They were okay. Like they were cakey, cakey muffins. They were nice, sweet things, but they weren't. They weren't as nice as a muffin with white flour. So I, I think, like, if you would just cook them on your own, just uh, do. <laughs> do it uh, do it with do it with white flour not not wholemeal um and uh the things extra i'm going to need apart from what's in here is an egg 60 ml of water and 100 ml of vegetable oil the instructions you can see are on here I don't, i'm now going to try and scroll them So that's that, but I don't know how much that helps without the uh, mix. The mix contains uh, wheat flour, sugar, dried blueberries, sh uh, wheat starch, modified starch, emulsifier, baking agents, xanthan gum salt, and natural vanilla flavour. And I have been uh, going backwards and forwards to myself on if I want to add something to zhuzh it up a bit. And I do have some chocolate chips in the cupboard, so I'm probably going to add some chocolate chips as well. Um, and also part of the baking from scratch, now I'm going to gather everything because um, I think that getting all of your equipment out and getting all of your ingredients out is part of cooking. Um, and if you have the baking show where everything's already nicely weighed out and in little bowls and already on the side, that doesn't give you so much of an idea of how it actually takes you to do things because I find that being um, like a chunk of time of the process. So uh, here we go. Right, so things I'm going to need. I'm going to need to get my baking tray out crouch down and complain about my knees because I keep it uh, under the oven. I need the paper cases, which are covered over here. And I had to buy muffin cases especially um, for the last time that I made the muffins. I've also got my chocolate chips that are in the cupboard muffin cases yeah because i've got cupcake cases which i had i because they come in packs of 100 and I, I i like i say i don't get to baking very often but i i did i did used to bake a bit those 100 cases have lasted a good long time so i bought 75 muffin cases i've made one batch of muffins before now so these muffin cases are gonna are gonna last as well so it feels like a, a worthwhile investment so i'm gonna get me egg I keep eggs in the fridge mostly um, because it stops me dropping them on the floor or breaking them. Only 
60 ml of water, 100 ml of vegetable oil. The oil obviously is by the stove. I've got sunflower oil. Hopefully that's vegetable enough. Um, it's not olive oil. Um, and I've also got a uh, jug full of water. And I've got measuring cups, which because they're quarter, third, half and a whole cup, none of them are exactly 100 ml. But there's an 80 ml one, and I can also use spoons. And I think that's probably the best way of measuring the uh, oil, because otherwise I'll have to put it in the jug, and then the jug will be a pain to clean. Okay, and I also need um, a nice big stirry wooden spoon that lives up here, and a bowl that lives under here. But this, even though it's in a cupboard, again because. I don't need to use bowls very often. It's got a bit dirty on the inside, so I'm going to give this bowl a wash. Again, this is worth it in real time because then you can see how long things take when you're not expecting to do things. I washed it after I used it, but um, it does not stay clean. So I'm going to let that dry and just look. So the oven needs to be heated to 180 degrees, fan 170 degrees, gas mark 4. I tend not to heat my oven too far in advance because it gets up to temperature quite quickly and obviously it's a waste of, uh, well, money in terms of electricity, although it's only pennies, but also just don't waste electricity in general um, but this uh, this won't take me long so I'll get that I'll get that on also it is a fan oven I tend to put it on the higher temperature anyway I've never no usually never noticed a problem uh, so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm also gonna read over my instructions to make sure I've got everything so preheat oven place the mixture in a bowl make a well in the center and add the egg water and oil use a large spoon mix everything Fill a muffin tray with paper cases using a spoon. I don't have a specific muffin tray. I've got, I call them mince pie tins because I make mince pies far more frequently than I do um, cupcakes. Um, but it's also a cupcake tray, but it's basically one of these. And yeah. Um, fill a muffin tray with paper cases. Fill the cases equally. Bake the muffins for 15 to 18 minutes or until golden brown. Remove from the oven, leave to cool for 10 minutes and enjoy. So... Uh, I know we always set my timer at the start. And I set it for 15 minutes and then we'll take a look. Um, other things that I will need, I need to fill that with the water. Um, also, I'll need somewhere to put the muffins afterwards. I do have a wire rack. Um, it's also under the bottom of the oven, but it's also under things. Um, so now I don't want to get it out. So a uh, tip that I use for things that aren't too small. My grill pan's clean. That's got a thing. I can just put them on there instead. And that will be fine. And the other thing I need to do is then have a tub to put them in. Um, I'm actually resting the camera on the tub. It's going to be, as you can see, it's a sweetie tub that I've kept. Um, I, have, I have no proper cake tin. I have like two quality street tubs, two roses tubs and that one. And I've specially kept that one because that one's, an, uh, that one's a super deep one. And it's very good for cakes. Um, and uh, the thing I do is just get some baking paper and some scissors and I'll fill that with baking paper uh, once things are ready to go. Right, I'm just going to fill this with 60 ml of water. Water and I've realised that's no good, but the cup is six, does have 60 ml. So, what I'm going to do is put, fill this with water and scoop. It's probably the best way because 
for anything under 150 mils, really, this isn't this isn't accurate enough. It's uh, because it's so low down, and because it only does it in 50 mil intervals. So that'll be fine. So I'll dry this bowl just with my tea towel. Is my spoon, which I'm going to need to scoop the muffin mixture into the tubs. All right, so open this up and also heat up the oven, which I was avoiding doing because it does make a noise and I'm not noise cleaning this. That's far too fiddly. That's there, so open this. talked about how we're going to do a bowl because here I had you here before for chopping but chopping is obviously on the flat and the bowl's like this so we'll see I don't have a tripod so in goes the mixture get it all out distribute the berries so there's that so make a well This is a large egg as well because it's a duck egg. I like duck's eggs. They're very, they're very tasty. They're much tastier than the chicken eggs I find. But uh, not all supermarkets do them. You need to go to a bigger supermarket to get a duck egg or know somebody who keeps ducks. And if you know somebody who keeps ducks, you already eat duck eggs because they will uh, be giving you all of the duck's eggs <laughs> that you can stand <laughs> because ducks lay a lot of eggs. Right. So 60 ml of water. And 100 ml of vegetable oil, which is going to be 80 ml plus 20 ml. And obviously pour over this so that if there's any spills it goes in. It's fine and with. And because oil always sticks to the, like not sticks but it leaves a coating it doesn't just pour out neatly like water i usually let things dangle over it for a little while to let the elastic drip out and then 20 ml a tablespoon is 15 ml so one tablespoon and because the egg's bigger i think that's probably enough Right, I'm going to put these in the sink because I don't want the oil dripping everywhere. Don't need the water anymore. Let me have a look at that. So it's a lot of liquid. And smush the yolk and mixy, 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 mixy. Also, obviously, this whole thing, because this is the second video, this is a learning process, so I'll start learning where's the best place to put the camera, what's the best place to prop it up as I go. Because, I, like I say, I'm not editing these, but I do look at them, watch bits of them to see, to see how everything sounded. So, there we go, and stir, 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 stir. And now we've got a nice paste. It's nice and quick. And I think I will add the chocolate chips. Um, probably, as, I'm not even measuring this, it's just by eye, what looks like a nice amount of chocolate chips. Um, that was pretty good. And then we need a bit more to do about chocolate. There we go. Let's get back to those to close them up. So there we go. So that's what it looks like now. And then it's this. And this says six to eight uh, muffins. So it isn't very many muffins, which is a good thing because I live alone. <laughs> Too many muffins, then um, I wouldn't get through them all before they went off. So we'll put 
put six cases out and we'll see how it goes. And might need to add some more. So take my spoon and to start off with splosh a spoonful in there. And another spoonful in there. Just top it up. And another spoonful in there. And if you put too much in one you can always squidge it out again and move it into one that's got too little. And I'm doing it a spoon at a time because I'm very bad at judging how much everything will make. Spoon, and that wasn't a very big spoon, so I'll add another spoon. And also make sure you get lots of bits in with each spoonful. So you don't have any that are any muffins that are actually plain muffins. So that goes into there. And another spoon. That one didn't end up very full. This was the first one I did, so I didn't know how I was judging it. And that's actually, I've dropped a bit on there. I'll wipe it off. And then two more cases, I think, because I think there is plenty of mixture left to do eight muffins. very often I don't know uh, don't know how much it look, should look like in a case um, but I can see from the amount of mixture I've got left if I added it to these cases then it would be far too much so in you go in you go now they've all had one one fairly full spoonful and there's still plenty left so now I start topping them up now that's more like half a spoonful Half a spoonful. Half a spoonful. Half a spoonful. Keep dropping it on the uh, thing, which you want to remove because otherwise it will bake onto it, which makes it harder to clean later. Half a spoonful. Now we've got to the point where still need to, there's still two that need half a spoonful and also it looks, it's starting to look gone but also there's plenty on the side so you just need to scrape it down. So half a spoonful. sink now so I'll just leave that spoon over there. It was balancing on the muffin case to not drip everywhere uh, then it fell off so now it has dripped everywhere. And another half a spoon. I'm going to slightly further away and you've seen slightly better maybe. And that one had a little, had a little less bits than everything else and also slightly less mixture so I'm just going to Poke a bit of mixture out of one of the others and move it across so that everything's kind of even, evened out. And do my final scrape. I was watching um, an old episode of Bake Off the other day, um, and Barry Berry was talking about how it was one of the how to episodes, and Mary Berry was talking about how she'd once been complimented. Um, from somebody who watched from like an ordinary housewife who watched on the telly and said that, uh, Mary Berry you could tell she was a proper cook she was the only one who scraped out the bowls properly <laughs> meaning that uh, all the other TV chefs believe things right I think that's everything right so that's all done and the light in the oven has gone which means uh all ready to go in the oven so we're going to put it in the oven 15 minutes press the timer um, and as there's nothing else to do all I can do now is tidy up 
So uh, over to the sink we go. You can come with me, otherwise this will be slightly boring. Oh, you get to see my untidy kitchen. Right, and let's wash everything up. This is a, again, this is giving you an idea of how long it actually takes in the oven. Um, and I do always try to do the, for, for baking things where it's in the oven, I do try to do the washing up during rather than leaving it. But this won't take 15 minutes. Um, so then what I'd normally do is uh, go sit, sit in the other room with the timer, reading something and wait until the timer won't dip. Um, what I shall do to entertain you, I don't know yet. Washing as count as ASMR, I reckon. I feel like this is a bit clattery. This one needs more thorough washing because it's had the oil in it and obviously oil, to get it off your hands or out of things, you need, you need plenty of washing up liquid because uh, that breaks it down. The soap breaks down the fat, otherwise it forms a film and it just doesn't, with just water, water, um, oil doesn't come off. That's for either your hands or dishes. I know it always manages to spill tons of water on myself as I wash up. Right, and then everything else is much easier. Just just have water in it, so it gives a quick rub. Spoon. Well, something else I tend to do when cooking water is about halfway through. There's a lot of recipes where it says turn things, and sometimes when it's things like potatoes, I think it means turn it over so the bottom crisps as well, but that's a terribly fiddly process. Um, and I cannot be bothered. However, what I do do is I will always turn the tray around in the oven because things near the back of the oven do cook faster um, than things near the front. So there's a definite um, tendency for things to cook more on one side if you don't turn the tray halfway. And possibly that is what they mean, but I, I, um, but uh, I'm not sure. But so uh, yes, it's, it's about seven minutes, and I, I, I don't time it precisely. I'll just uh, go over and look and see how close we are to seven minutes when uh, when I finish washing up. I would also sometimes scrape the bell with a spoon and then eat it <laughs> as well, usually when I'm cooking. But uh, I felt that was a bit antisocial. Like uh, having my mouth full while I'm trying to talk is uh, not good. So you'd just be watching me eat, which uh, can be fun, but uh, not, I think, if it's raw muffin mix. And I think it contains, technically it contains raw egg, but yeah, not only is the egg uh, plenty in date, but also, uh, well, I'm in the UK, so I don't think Americans know this, but I'm in the UK, so our eggs are all uh, fine and free from salmonella, so it's fine from that perspective. Um, but also, it's such a tiny amount. Uh, but it's not, I'm not too worried. But uh, yes. To get this thoroughly washed. The problem is, I've got. Uh, it's got the whole meal bits which have now got stuck on the sponge so as I wash I wipe them over it rather than making sure it's come off. Right, so clean, clean. Bitty bowl. There we go. So washing up is done. Okay. And oh, oh, away we go. Right, I think I'm going to get 
different tub now because I need to line that one with baking paper. So out we come. So different tub. This one's got uh, tortilla chips in it that I made. So also I have a second tray because they, they, I stack them on top of each other. So I pulled both out when I went to get the ones. So just gonna put that away. The muffin cases can be put away. Those can be thrown away. Right, so this, you can't see my head or my hands, so it works both worlds. So yeah, just pull it out. And I, I, I don't make it, because this is just to keep it, keep it off the plastic. I don't measure, I just lighten it, run it over the top, with a bit dangling down each side. Cut off the baking paper. There we go. And there we go. So that's going to have the muffins in it, but I won't put the muffins in it until they've uh, until they've cooled, because otherwise a warm thing lets off steam. Um, if you put the lid on while it's warm, the steam, will, well, as it cools down, it will condense. The steam will condense on the lid and everything will get damp so um, that's that's why you have a cooling rack um, or or also leaving it in the tray but yeah so that's ready to go that can go away I so many different sizes of plastic bag as well I get the teeny ones for things like these chocolate chips So the chocolate chips go back in the cupboards. The muffin cases go back in the cupboards. Uh, and then this, um, I won't throw away until it's done, uh, but it's cardboard, so it'll go in the recycling. Could have done icing for them, but I can't be bothered now. Um, and I've got uh, not quite sure what flavour would go. Lemon icing would probably go, um, but I, I have half a lemon. I might. Just gonna wipe the sides down. Too much of a mess, um, and I don't need a stove top. I don't need to wipe down the stove. Just this bit where I've dripped some things. Right, that's nice. And now that I've been talking about this to you, I normally wouldn't bother. Um, but now that I've been talking out loud, I've got the idea in my head. I'm going to make them nicely. So that's nice. Oh, and we're on to six minutes left. Six and a half minutes. So uh, turn the tray. And you can indeed see, should have, should have shown you. Um, you, can't, you can't see through the door of my oven because um, I had duck for Christmas um, all to myself. It was very, very nice, it lasted a week. Um, but duck is a fatty bird um, and I haven't scrubbed the inside glass. Have a quick look before I let all the heat out. You can see that they're not they're not done yet. Although it's also hard because they because of the wholemeal flour they're naturally brown, so it's hard to tell when they're golden brown versus when they're just brown. So uh, that's not great. But I could also see as I turned them that the ones at the back had gone further brown than the ones up there. So it's a good thing that they're turned. Um, and yeah, now that you've uh, now that I've chatted to you and thought, oh, I could make lemon icing. I'm going to make lemon icing. I'm not normally very spontaneous, but. I have the smallest bowl, again I need to wash it out. It's always the big bowl or the small bowl. If it's one of the bowls in the middle, they don't get dirty because there's other bowls sitting on top of them stopping things dropping in. So, uh, 
And now thinking about it, I also have some cream cheese that I want to use up. So, we're going to have, uh, completely spontaneously, cream cheese lemon icing. Right, what do I need? I need that half lemon. I need that cream cheese out of use up. That might not be that like lemon juice. I do have a bottle of lemon juice. These bottles of lemon juice, they're so useful. It's 250 ml of lemon juice. Even if you cook things using lemons, you usually only need like a tiny squeeze. Um, and so they always says, um, once open, keep refrigerated and use within four weeks. And it says on it 50 servings. <laughs> four weeks is 28 days. So I don't know how much lemon is being used. So I just open it, use it, and leave it in the fridge, and it's fine. Um, even several months later, you do not need to throw it away after four weeks. So anyway, so I've got lemon squeeze, lemon squeeze in. That's probably still good. half a lemon. That's probably still good. And I'll just get a spoon and some icing sugar. So this is going to be, this is all very much going to be done to taste as I, te done to taste, uh, taste testing as I go, because I have no idea of proportions. This is probably something you learn if you bake a lot. I, as I say, I don't, I cook a lot, um, savoury foods. I don't bake a lot, although I do enjoy doing it. So um, we're vaguely going on the vague memories of how thing I think things ought to be based on cooking I did many years ago. And just, just vaguely, like... Even if I haven't cooked it, I've had cream. I've had lemon cream cheese icing before. I don't know what it tastes like, so we're going on that. This also means I don't have to think of something to entertain you for the remaining. Um, well, currently two minutes forty-five seconds, um, then probably plus another two or three minutes cooking time. Um, and so uh, you, you managed to miss me uh, reciting poetry, which was my my idea, or possibly speeches from Shakespeare. Yeah, that didn't come out much thing, but also I don't need much icing, so there we go, so that's done. Tea towel over here, it's not supposed to be over here. Right, so icing sugar, so I've got posh icing sugar from uh, many moons ago that I just need to finish off. There's really not very much of that left, it's gone all hard. See if uh, getting it wet helps, and then cream cheese. Things I might yeah, I've got to wipe the spoon with a tea towel just to uh, not get cream cheese, uh, not get icing sugar in the cream cheese because icing sugar and cream cheese make a nice icing. Uh, but then if I want to have the rest of the cream cheese on a sandwich, that's it, that's less good. of lemon. I always like to, that's why, that's why I went and dragged out the uh, seeds. I do like to put the lemon pulp in as well as, uh, or lime, whichever I'm cooking with, uh, lemon or lime pulp in as well as the juice. If it's too sour, I'll add more sugar and cheese, and if it's too sweet, then I'll add more lemon juice. Although too sweet is a, an interesting concept that I've not yet encountered. Um, it's certainly too wet. There 
So they're nicely risen but not fully brown, so I'm going to give it two more minutes. Of uh, putting the big lumps of icing, I should have. Oh, there we go, I managed to crush one of them. Crush, crush, crush. And again, I'm getting my hands all in this, which doesn't matter right now because um, I'm the only one going to be eating them and I'm perfectly happy with that. If you're cooking for guests, I can imagine that some people would get very uh, picky. Yes, if I'm, cooking, if I'm cooking for other people, I always make sure that I do things like use different spoons rather than the same spoon for tasting. Um, but if it's just me, then I've already got my spit in my mouth. I don't need to do it again. Right? I think I've crushed the big lump and I've got it all nicely stirred. So what's that taste like? There's nice and sugar stuck to the spoon. Not very strong lemon flavour, which could do with a bit more lemon. Oh. So, thick cloth, trying to grip the lemon to open it. Oh dear. There we go. Just a quick sprinkle. Otherwise, the of course. Oh, there we go. Let's see what they're like. And they're still looking a little pale to me. And see, that's been at 180 degrees. So I'm going to give it two more minutes, and then I'll definitely take them out just to stop them going too dry, even though they're quite pale. Um, and that's been at 180 degrees for the like more than the time. So this is why I don't bother using the fan oven setting. Okay, what does that taste like? Okay, now it needs a touch more icing sugar. And I think actually a touch more cheese just to bulk it up. And what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with leftover. A, because I've only got eight muffins, I'm going to end up with leftover icing that I then need to eat. But also, because um, I plan on popping them all in the tub, which I still will do, um, they're going to end up. A bit more lemon. Uh, they're going to end up um, meaning that because um, I'm stacking them on top of each other, it means that uh, that's going to be a bit annoying. Because uh, when they were all just dry muffins, they could just go on the top of each other, no problem. But now that they're muffins with uh, runny icing on the top, it is quite runny, as you can see. Uh, it's going to be uh, slightly... And this is a new bag, so this is not, like, this is not hard and lumpy. I suppose this will also make it less runny, but uh, the, the icing basically, you'll put one on top of the other and it'll stick to the bottom of the other one's case. Right, that might have been too much icing. Oh, and the time is on five, four, three, two, one. This is the beep. Here come the muffins. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, they're reasonably brown. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Right, so. so these are the muffins. And I'm going to leave it one minute in the pan just to cool up enough so that they, I can pick them up. Then I'll pop them onto there, then leave it ten minutes. Um, and I was going to like go away for that bit because I said I'd show you how long things take. But cooling enough to eat for a cake when often you don't eat the cake immediately anyway. Um, I was just going to 
do, do what I did last time and uh, review the food later. Okay, that's sweet. That's going to buy some sugar in. I'm just going to slightly more down. I like the lemons that make it all liquid. Okay, so that's lemon icing. Just made out of random stuff that I had in the fridge. Right. On to the tray. One. Two. Also, the reason things like wire are actually good for cooling is because obviously they've got the gap underneath and they're not solid. Uh, so the heat can escape from the bottom as well as the top. Six. And now I've got another, because I've made the last thing and I've got that, I've got another lot of washing up to do. Right. Put them in the fridge as So, bin, fridge, fridge. I put the ice cream back in the bag and I've realised this bag is quite an old bag, which you can tell from the colour of the bag. So I will get um, one of my many other bags. Zip top bags I reuse if I haven't had meat in them, if it's just been bread and things and the bread. Um, obviously anything that goes mouldy in a bag, I get rid of it, but uh, if the bag's just had like some bread in it, um, I just keep using them. So there, that can go in the new bag, that can go in the bin. This can go back in the cupboard, and I very conveniently, because all my sugar lives at the back of the cupboard, I didn't put things back in as I took it out, so now it's easy to put things back inside. Right, that's all the way. Right, that's the icing. That can stay there actually because it's going to need to uh, need to use it to ice. So I'm not going to use a piping bag. That's much more fat than washing up than I need. So these go on the pile for recycling. And this and this can go be washed up and oh at the timer it's been about two minutes so, so oh, I keep I keep going over six seven eight set the timer for eight minutes yeah and this time I won't wipe down the side come on and we go so I'll just quickly wash these down the side because I'm going to make a mess um, icing the cupcakes. Um, washing up, washing up. And again, my usual thing when washing up is to listen to music or watch YouTube. And I don't think, I think some people like washing up more than I do, but um, if there's not too much of it, it's all right. If there's a, big pile of washing up and I do try to wash up every well no, I don't try but I wash up every day because I wash up before I cook but if I cook something complicated that's also that needs a lot of different items to use but also I haven't been able to wash up as I go because it's needing me constantly by the stove then and then I've got a big pile to deal with oh that's not uh, that's not so good but a few items is all right I also tend to splash water all up myself as well I meant to film this earlier and then I had to wait to uh dry my t-shirt because I was just soaked um, and it had all splashes on it and it looked like I'd spilt something down myself. So wipe everything clean. Oh there's a bit of muffin on the tray. Because it was in cases I just need to wipe up the bits where it's let spilled and splashed. There isn't many of. And these are trays. This is my secondary tray. You see, this is my backup tray. I've got. An, I've got. This one's getting a bit uh, battered and scratched. And when I do mince pies, obviously mince pies don't go in a case. It's for anything in a case. It doesn't make a difference. But because mince pies don't get in a case, I'll use my other tray. I can use this for the overspill because my mince pie recipe makes 
usually about 14 mince pies, obviously these are about 12. And it's the two inside ones, the two least battered ones, so I'll use my full other tray, the two middle ones of this one. ready like I said I'm not wiping down until uh, until I've done the icing so I need to do it once more I've got the top ready back down slightly I've got four minutes to go before I ice them So what we're going to do for four minutes. Uh, Twas brillig and the slidy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borough groves and the moam wraths out grabe. What's the next bit? I did used to be able to, I, I deliberately learnt Jabberwocky quite a long while ago, um, but it's been ages since I thought about it. I do know, I, I definitely know bits of it. I now can't remember which verse is the next verse because it's all fairly nonsense. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the jaws that catch. Beware the jub-jub bird and shun, the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And, as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood, and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come into my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabduous day, kaloo kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slithy toves, did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borough groves, and the moam wraths outgrabe. I'm fairly sure I skipped like one or two verses at the start. Also that, that is where Ch uh, Lewis Carroll, Charles Dodgson, invented the word chortle, which wasn't a word um, until he made it up. And... For some reason, out of all of the words in that poem that he made up, that one stuck. We're right down to two minutes. Um, other poems do I know? Jenny kissed me when, she, when we met, jumping from the chair she sat in. Time, who loves to get sweets to your list, put that in. Say I'm weary, say I'm sad, say that health and wealth have missed me. Say I'm growing old, but add, Jenny kissed me. I like that one. That's uh, Leigh Hunt. Obviously, Jabberwock is Lewis Carroll. Uh, Leigh Hunt, I think that one's actually not out of copyright, so maybe I should have done that one. Um, There's one about roses by Dorothy Parker, and that's definitely not out of copyright that I very much like. And I will probably, I think if I do this again, where I know I'm going to be sitting around, I'll have a poetry book with, like, bookmarks in it next to, next to me so that I can uh, actually read the poems out rather than try and remember them and go and realise I can only remember the bits that I liked of the poem. Um, so, yeah, one more minute to go. These are still, they're still warm, especially at the base, actually. They're quite warm to the touch. Uh, but they'll be cool enough to ice and eat. Um, and 
having, having something to, to eat when it's warm is always a nice treat. And this is the thing with where, like, I'm, I'm letting the timer tick down to four, to like, for another 35 seconds, even though they're not going to get appreciably cooler in that 35 seconds, because I'm, I'm just like, but I've set a timer now, so I have to follow the timer, um, even though the timer was set at a sort of like an arbitrary eight minutes after I'd messed around for about two minutes when they said 10 minutes. So um, it makes no difference, and still I'm talking to you while I'm waiting, because I'm not going to do anything until the timer beeps. Um, and even after I've iced, it'll still be too warm to go in the tub, so I'll have to leave the tub to uh, to later. Four, three, two, one. There we go. Right, icing time. And I'm not icing them on that rack because then um, that means I don't have to. You see? Yes, we can see that. If I'm not icing them on the rack, that means then I don't need to clean the rack. So I've just drip some icing over the top. Drips. This is going to be, I'm, I've got massively far too much icing. Like this, this uh, couldn't, well it wouldn't do a full cake, but it can, it, it will do more than eight muffins. Right, so, and then I've got a spooge of icing on top. Doesn't that look nice? It will stop it from being dry as well, I suppose. Right. And then another spoonful. And another spoonful. And when I've done the last one of these, I will eat one of them and see how it tastes. Let's see, even though that was a packet mix, I added chocolate chips and I've done random icing at the last minute that I just decided to because I was talking to you and uh, realised that I could. One of my favourite cakes that I used to make uh, quite a lot was a lemon and poppy seed cake, uh, with, which, had the, which had a lemon cream cheese icing, which was a lot less watery than this, But because uh, I had actually had a recipe for that um, and had the proper amounts. Oh, this isn't too bad. You always forget about, the thing about bowls is you always go, oh, that's a lot. And then you get down a bit and then you realise that because the bowl gets narrower as it goes down, what was a lot here is suddenly much less when you get to the bottom. Seasons on that one. Of course, they're quite large muffins, so having a having a large amount of icing on them isn't too terrible. And there we go, and last one. Oh yes, and that's actually just about the right sort of the right amount of icing, um, completely unplanned. Oh, I spent. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat this one. Tell you how it tastes. Um, I'll probably dip bits of it in the remaining icing, and then we'll be done. So, oh, oh dear, it's not, I think it still wasn't quite cooked, possibly the chocolate chips didn't help because I've opened it, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's uh, not come away from the paper, but that's fine, because I'm going to store the rest of it in the paper, and I can always scrape the paper with my teeth. Right, here we go. Mm. Mm. Definitely could have done with two more minutes again cooking. But I already cooked it for 19 minutes when it said 18. Mm. Again, it's not terrible, but it would be improved by not being wholemeal flour. The icing does help, because even though it's plenty moist, Sorry. Even though it's plenty moist, um, it's still a bit chewy. But yeah, it's not terrible. Again, I think it's solid three stars out of four. If I was making it, I'd make I'd make it again myself, but I wouldn't use wholemeal flour, and then that would be perfectly nice. But at the same time, I've got other cakes that I like, and also cakes that I haven't tried that I like to try making, so I probably wouldn't bother making these again. On the other hand, if I had a, mix, a packet of the mix that I wanted to use up, that would also be fine. I'd perfectly happily eat them. 
So that's all nice. Mm. So that's everything. Mm. So that was very tasty. Um, and that's everything. I've got a last little bit of cleaning up to do now. Um, and obviously I'll put them away once they've cooled down fully. Uh, but that's everything. So bon appetit. And I'll see you all in the future probably. Bye bye. So back again because I've just eaten the second muffin. Um, a few hours later and now um, this one was much more solid so possibly that one that I ate was just a bit undercooked or possibly it was still just too warm and hadn't firmed up yet um, and it was much nicer when uh, solid uh, there was also I didn't mention before but the chocolate chips really did add something there was a good distribution of the chocolate chips and the blueberries that did taste very very nice um, and with it solid I, I did really like the icing as well I think um, I still think the icing was a good idea so I'm, I'm glad I randomly decided to do that and yeah overall um, that was that was a tasty tasty muffin and I think I'm going to enjoy eating the rest of them okay bye bye